we used to get um, customers call and can I come and see you? Uh, well, as you might remember, um, Little Shelford is a village just outside Cambridge and that's about 50, 55 miles north of London and all the music industry was centred around London um, and it was just the right distance because uh, customers would come and spend a day. If we'd been any closer, they'd have spent a couple of hours and gone home again. Um, if we'd been further away, they wouldn't have come. <laughs> and so it was the ideal distance. They'd have a day out. And uh, in this beautiful uh, area around Cambridge. Um, <clears throat> and we would talk about various things and they would tell me what their ideal... Uh, console was, what they really felt they wanted to see uh, in a piece of equipment that they would, that they might order from me. The only transistors that were available in those days were germanium transistors. Um, and they <clears throat> were pretty noisy, tended to be unreliable, and uh, uh, there were new ones being produced at quite frequent intervals and that meant that I had to <clears throat> acquire the, the latest transistor, check it out for noise and distortion and so on. And if you look at some of these old modules today, you'd find that there were a lot of variations. And then a um, customer would want um, a lot of different equalization frequencies, which meant that you had to have a switch which could rotate around um, the necessary number of frequencies. Um, the kind of switch which was available was the old Yaxley, which some people might remember the name. Um, <clears throat> it was a, um, a, a, a very basic um, SRBP um, paperboard um, wafer with um, the contacts uh, riveted to it and uh, it wasn't all that reliable but it was about the only thing that was available and it was large diameter so to fit these things in we had to produce a module which was wide enough which led to the early modules being 2.8 inches wide instead of 1.8 inches wide. Um, <clears throat> and then we found, of course, that as more and more of these things are wanted to be grouped together, uh, they just had to be smaller. So we had to do a lot of homework to try and find components that were smaller and more efficient um, and reasonably priced. The big difference between a transistor piece of equipment and the tube or valve equipment that I'd worked on for years before that was that tube equipment needed high voltages. Between 250 and 350 volts was typical. And now transistors didn't need anything like that voltage. Um, so uh, a good voltage seemed to me, in fact, it was dictated very largely by the um, uh, uh, germanium transistors, which uh, seemed to be optimized to use something of the order of 24 to 30 volts. And to save myself the trouble of designing a power supply, um, I used lantern batteries. 12 volt lantern batteries, two of those in series would give me the 24 volts. And it had the advantage that um, the equipment would now be able to run off a reasonable range of voltages. Uh, during a few days while I was working on it, the voltage would gradually drop and uh, probably unnoticed by me at the in the first place until I wasn't getting the results that I got a few days ago and I realized the voltage had dropped. But okay, it still worked. So it meant that 
um, the equipment would work and it was not critically dependent upon the actual voltage of the power supply, which meant, too, from the design of a power supply point of view, it was easier for me. We had to decide on a color scheme for the modules, and those wide 2.8 inch wide modules uh, were all black, shiny black. And then somebody told me that that was a bad thing um, because it gave people a kind of um, a connotation of the kitchen sink, which uh, was in uh, not the kitchen sink, the kitchen stove, I should say. Um, the old black stove, it, it's not something that comes to mind these days, but it did in those days where people were still cooking on uh, coal and wood and this old black range. So they didn't want modules to look black too. <laughs> it's a, a far-fetched idea, but anyway, there it was. And how were we going to choose a color? Uh, the traditional equipment colored technical test gear, for instance, uh, was a gray, a kind of slightly greenish gray. Um, I didn't want to copy that, and eventually settled for this RAF blue-gray, roughly the color of the RAF Royal Air Force uniforms, which was quite attractive. Also, we had to find knobs that were suitable, and I had, I still have, this ideal that uh, a knob which is going to operate on a put-in shometer, which is a, is a continuous travel, um, has to be round. And a knob which is going to operate on a switch, which is going click, click, click around the, the, the circle, um, should be a kind of bar knob, which you can grip more easily and you can actually see without having to depend upon the pointer. You can actually see where it's pointing more easily. And that was my theory. Um, the best knobs that I'd ever come across were actually used by Marconi test gear. And I had several pieces of Marconi test gear, which was quite good. And um, I took the knobs off the test gear and tried them on these modules. They, they look good. And so finally I approached Marconi's, Marconi instruments, I should say, and did a deal with them. They said, how many do you want? So I was looking at a console, and they were quite um, surprised at the number of knobs that I was going to want. If I'd wanted fewer, they probably wouldn't have been interested. If I'd wanted a lot more, they wouldn't have been able to. But the quantity that I asked for initially um, just happened to suit them, and uh, so they sent me a box full of knobs. Um, and then, you know, a week later, there was another order for knobs, and we didn't look back for a long time. Those knobs became pretty standard. And all that I've just expressed as a theory actually worked out. Those bar knobs and round knobs, they really worked. People liked them. And the color scheme worked quite well with the, with the panel color. So that was the way in which these early modules developed. Life in those days was full of interest because from some points of view, no two consoles were the same. The input modules um, were pretty much all different. You'd get go from one console to another and they'd be different in detail. My uh, factory manager, manager uh, Jim LaHaye, used to tear his hair out and say, why in the world can't we build two the same? Uh, it would be so much easier instead of having to do uh, 48 uh, or 50 modules with one set of specs and uh, another set, another 48, with some marginal differences. Can't we make them the same? Well, of course, it did lead to, to making them the same, and they became identified with numbers. Those original 
wide modules that I mentioned earlier, the 2.8 inch, were um, the 51 series. There were 1051s and 1052s and 1053s. And they were all with germanium transistors. And then we went down to the <coughs> narrower modules, uh, 1.8 inches wide, and that was the uh, 1060 series, 1063, 1066, and so on. And somewhere about that time in history, um, the television industry suddenly woke up to the fact that they could not reproduce in the television studio the sound that the recording studios were, were getting. They simply didn't have the consoles. So they came and wanted the same quality, the same sound, but they didn't have the space for it. Um, and it's as true today, I believe, as it was then, that the television people used to always put sound into the onto the back burner. It wasn't important. Yet they had to, it had to be important. They just had to produce this sound. So instead of having um, a module with the luxury of having a microphone input and a line input and separate um, EQs for these different uh, paths and separate gain controls, we had to have um, an input switch which combined the um, uh, gain steps with the, uh, uh, with the level control all on one knob, and the module became smaller. And that went to the 1066, um, and the 1073 was still a recording module, and the 60 series was a television module. Subtle differences, not much difference in the performance, but quite a lot of problems from the point of view of sourcing the right components and um, getting that same performance.